Hey, this is Greg Dawson from Greg Dawson Photography and I'm Ryan Erlinson with Ryan Erlinson Photography and we have a show about nothing. <laughs> no, uh, we have a show about uh, photo equipment, video equipment, gear, review, uh, beers, what have you and so basically what we're going to start out with is a few lenses uh, since we're on a video show, I thought we'd go over a few lenses we can use for video. So Ryan, take it away. Oh, okay. Uh, what we have here, we've bought, uh, we picked up a couple of these at our local camera shop called Night Camera, and it's in uh, Vancouver, Washington. And we've picked up these old uh, Takumar, does that sound right? Yeah, sure. Takumar, Taco Bell, super, Takumar. Super multi-coated. They used to fit uh, Pentax. <clears throat> they're called a screw mount lens. And you can actually, they're an M42 mount. I believe they're an M42 lens. And you can buy um, these, yeah, these M42 to EOS uh, adapters for like 10 bucks on eBay from Photo Diox is the place I've been getting mine. And you just, you actually just attach them here. And screw them on. How much are the attachments? <clears throat> What did you say? Ten bucks. About ten bucks. Yeah. yeah. So super cheap. I think we picked these lenses up. Um, I think it was like fifty or sixty for this one. And Greg's got another one of fifty millimeter. This is a one thirty five uh, f three point five. And the build quality is like you can't even get stuff like this unless you're spending thousands <clears throat> dollars because it's all feel that it's all metal. Yeah. I mean the I have my hundred millimeter macro right here, and it's literally about the same weight and you Plast can tell the difference. Plastic, right. Plastic, metal, everything about it is just built ridiculously well and it's... It's got the what, long focus. How, how old do you think this lens is? It's from the 70s. Yeah, it's from the 70s and this thing is held up. Perfect glass, no Beautiful. scratches and what was it? 40, 30 or 40 bucks? Something like that, yeah. The second yeah. one was 30, the first one was 60. Yeah, ridiculous. So night camera here in Vancouver, Washington, totally hooked us up um, and keeps calling us with, because uh, I mean, a lot of these are being uh, handed off, sold off because nobody's using them anymore. But for video, since you don't have to have um, autofocus, it's a perfect lens to have. Um, gets you in that really good quality sector without having to throw a huge chunk of change down. So. And from what I've read, um, it's supposed to be really good for the crop sensor cameras like the, so we're looking at this, you know, the 7D, the 60D, and the, the Rebel T2i for that, especially because of the uh, size of the lens and everything works better on the crop sensors, I guess, than the, the full frame. So that's definitely a way to go if you're getting into uh, filmmaking. You're starting out because these things are super sharp and the tolerances back then were excellent. Well, that's what I think about that. Yeah, and the reason why we were looking into these lenses uh, because we uh, started a new videography company for weddings called CNA Wedding Films, and like I said earlier, we, we had spent a lot of money on uh, getting set up for photography, but uh, still needed a few odds and ends for videography, and this was a cheap and easy way for us to get in there. And I mean, they're real versatile. Uh, we have the 135, we have, we have two 135s now, and a 55 and actually two 55s just one just one 55 yeah, we're so, looking for another one so it's real easy to set up for multi-camera set up at uh, a wedding which is great and if you're not doing if we're doing stills at a wedding then this is a great way to not tie up your other lenses yeah you're using those and you're, you're taking some stills and you got video running or something like that as a ceremony and you can do that and not have to worry about taking up your other lenses for sure One thing as photographers we're able to do is find different um, applications uh, for different equipment. And we have found probably the, the best use uh, for the Fong Dong. It's or time for some people it's known as the light sphere. Or light sphere. <laughs> I think it's a Fong Dong snack time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wow. Oh, what are we drinking? We might as well talk about what our beers are today. Oh, to wash down that uh, Fong Dong treat. 
Uh, I'm drinking a Burr Seasonal Ale from Widmer Brothers, uh, locally brewed here in the Northwest. Delicious beer, uh, especially at 7.2% uh, ABV. It's like a, a little bit uh, more on the tart side, it's bitter side. More hops but, in it, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit hoppy, but it's still delicious and very smooth on the finish. And then I'm drinking from <clears throat> what I didn't know until recently is from uh, Coors. And it's the uh, Blue Moon Company that they're trying to go under with the uh, Blue Moon products. I'm pretending. Yeah, hey, a great beers. move by Coors. Yeah. Uh, Blue Moon <laughs> is probably one of the best beers um, in my beer arsenal. Uh, love it. Great taste, especially the uh, Abbey L, and as well as the original. Uh, so great yeah. beers. Yeah, definitely. And you don't have a problem with it. Or do you have a big problem with a big corporate beer company? No, no. no. We're all out here trying to make a buck. Uh, a good lens to have in your arsenal is a macro lens, uh, for me at least. I have the Canon Macro 100 millimeter 2.8. Uh, it's the previous version, uh, so there is no image stabilization. Uh, but for what I'm using it for, it's been great. And it's half the price of the new one. This runs for about 500, 599, I think when I bought it a couple months ago. The new one with the image stabilization is around 1,000, 1,100. What I found to be the best about this lens is how much I can zoom in, I guess, if you will. Um, I just shot a wedding with Ryan actually a couple months ago or a month ago and was up on the balcony and had beautiful shots of, uh, from above of the couple and the exchanging of the vows. It was a little bit more low light so the 2.8 helped a lot and I had it on a uh, tripod so that helped out the, uh, the even, no image stabilization part of it. Uh, great lens, great build quality. I think Canon did a real excellent job on this. Uh, this is a newer lens for the crop sensor cameras, a 1.6 factor. It's the EFS 60 macro lens, and I've had this for a while, do product photography. And actually, the, at the 60 millimeter, you take it times you know 1.6, you're going to be about a, one, uh, 96 millimeters. So it's the equivalent on a crop sensor of uh, the way the 100 millimeter is on the full frame sensor, which is 100 millimeters, but a 100 millimeter lens, this macro on a crop sensor is like 165 or whatever it would come out to. The 2.8 lens. So, I recommend this one too. This is a super sharp lens, wide open. It's uh, amazing. I use it for product photography and everything from portraits as well. Super sharp. It's got the ultrasonic motor. It's about $450. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that I found with this lens, the 100 millimeter, is how close I can shoot uh, to the subject, uh, especially with ring shots. Uh, I found this to be a huge integral part of, of my product shots, uh, or wedding shots, um, especially of the rings because how close I can get to them and how tack sharp it is, uh, which is great. Um, so definitely a good buy. Especially if you don't have the 11 Hundo throw down on the stabilization one. Um, <coughs> you're probably going to want, like I would think, you'd want that on a tripod most of the time. For yeah, him, definitely. I'm shot. shooting uh, this a lot on a tripod. Uh, one thing with the lens that I've been doing outside with my portrait shots is with all the available light, I can bump it up to a shutter speed of 250th uh, and it's still tack sharp and I don't necessarily need to use a tripod uh, as long as there's a lot of light out there. But if you go anything underneath that, you start to see a little bit of softness in your pictures, um, uh, definitely. So if you are going under 2, 250, uh, use a tripod and make sure you have a lot of light. Greg mentioned his uh, 100 millimeter, but uh, I forgot, I don't think I mentioned the model on this. It's an EFS, which means it only fits on the crop sensor cameras. Oh, good point. Yeah, it's got this little, extra thing on the back so it won't uh you know, the rubber gasket thing yeah because if you look this is a ef right um so it doesn't have that you, you just see you you have the two different rings on there 
So this, I believe, actually gets in closer to the sensor. Mistake, Which so is they better can make it, or? Well, they can make the materials is cheaper because the lens is smaller form factor as well for that. And that's one of the reasons, too. I think it's closer to the sensor. And that's mm -hmm. one of the okay. technicality thingies. Oh, that's great. Yes, that's sound. So once the rain lets up in the <laughs> great northwest, we're planning on doing a few location uh, shoots uh, for the show to show the difference between uh, the different lenses, uh, different cameras we have, and the different audio equipment we have. Just to give you kind of a different uh, look into the equipment we have, what works, what doesn't work, costs, that sort of thing. Uh, one thing I want to recommend is uh, I've, been, I've been a subscriber for uh, a couple of years or so and then Greg just got his first issue a couple weeks ago. It's Rangefinder Magazine. It's actually uh, free if you have a, your own photography business. Yeah. And so it's great. I mean, everybody likes something free, and it's packed with good articles and uh, things for marketing and a lot of reviews, and recommendations. And they usually have a theme. They like um, one of my favorite themes. Both of us would be the senior, uh, the seniors, and the family portraits issue yeah. they have every year for sure. And then there's a wedding. There's a wedding uh, issue portraits, landscapes. They cover a lot of things. Yeah, gives you a lot of different perspective from different people. Yeah. Uh, and I think I signed up for mine in, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe August. And yeah, got it takes a little while to get it, so don't got, give up. Is this the issue, December or November? You know, I sent, signed up in August and got it by November, so um, quick quick and easy. Yep, you, do, you can subscribe online or um, look for a... Uh, or just go to your local bookstore <laughs> yeah. and look for a rangefinder and take out the little insert and uh, fill it out and send it in. But yeah, great. It's free. It's awesome. It works wonders. Uh, so that does it for us for this week's episode of the show name we don't know yet. Uh, We're app, that. Aptly titled episode one. We hope you enjoyed your time and don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, maybe put a couple comments. We're definitely open to answering your questions um, or uh, open to you making recommendations of your own equipment in the comment section uh, down below. Uh, so cheers and see you next time.